By the end of the 20th century, there was only one person who absolutely ruled the pop music landscape, and that person was Michael Jackson. As 2000 came around, Michael at that point had released five consecutive critically acclaimed solo albums, and then in 2001, he released Invincible. Now, his last album, this record had a much more mixed reception, and due to choices like not deciding to tour, his label, Sony Music, abruptly stopped promoting the album. This, alongside Michael's straining public image, led to another world colliding. In 1995, Martin Bashir was a journalist for the BBC, and more specifically, the current affairs programme Panorama. After Princess Diana had separated from her husband at the time, Prince Charles, the public had a surged interest in the state of the royal family. After a particularly revealing interview was watched by almost 22 million people, Bashir became one of the most respected journalists in television. But after moving to ITV in 1999, he joined the Tonight program, which was similar in vain to Panorama. His next target to interview was to be Michael Jackson. But on the other hand... Louis Farouk characterised himself as a shy, naive oddball in his interview style, which allowed him to talk to those within niche American subcultures for his BBC Two series, Louis Farouk's Weird Weekends, which is also one of my favourite shows of all time. His natural English charm allowed him to get people to act casual and almost alien in front of the cameras, which makes for a neat time capsule now. Let me just sum it up in one clip. <laughs> I gotta give it to you, man. You know, you, you gave it uh, 110%. Oh, thank you. But when Weird Weekends ended after three series, he ran a similar type of interview program called When Louis Met, which targeted specifically British D-list celebrities. Paul Daniels, the magician, Neil Hamilton, the MP, Chris Eubank, the boxer, Jimmy Savile... Yeah. Having cemented a place in the BBC's documentary filmmaker roster, especially being based in America, he attempted to go to a much larger scale, to someone he had been a fan of for years. Keith Harris and Orville, no, Michael Jackson. Sorry, spoilers, Louis never got to interview Michael, and eventually Bashir made Living with Michael Jackson, where Bashir travelled with Michael through his daily life, and in one-on-one -on -one interviews, Michael revealed to Bashir how he allowed children to sleep in the same bed as him, although, for neutrality, he stated it was strictly non-sexual, and Jackson later accused Bashir of editing and twisting the real interviews which took place. Honestly, make your own judgement. But there was a trial, and subsequently a non-guilty verdict. And after Living's broadcast in February 2003, it would impact his image significantly. So, what would have happened if Louis got it. While his solo efforts were ongoing, he had a singular director film every step of the way. Then, in November, Louis, Martin and Michael was broadcast on BBC Two. Okay, here's what happened. In summer 2002, having heard Michael was in England for a trip, Louis checks into the St Pancras Renaissance Hotel on the same floor as Michael. He attempts to deliver a letter at 1am and the next morning he actually sees Michael on an open top bus at a protest against Sony Music. <laughs> And that, my friends, is undeniable joy. On his trip, Michael had been accompanied by magician Uri Geller, only known for bending a spoon on Noel's house party that one time. Uri is Louis' main contact, and supposedly the bridge between him and an interview, and it doesn't help that Uri acts incredibly suspicious and nervous in front of the camera. He reiterates how he doesn't want people to develop a negative image about Michael. <laughs> and then proceeds to say he's officially arranged an interview with Martin Bashir. To be fair, Uri is aware of Louis' slightly manipulative style of questioning, and he says how that is the main reason he's hesitant to push anything further. As standard, he then goes to America. <laughs> He finds the manager of a Michael Jackson tribute act, who claims to be the personal magician of Michael and formerly Muhammad Ali, called Majestic Magnificent. He also claims he will be able to link Louis up with Joe Jackson, Michael's father and the former manager of the Jackson 5. But like Uri, he's not entirely trusting of Louis. Why do you say I'm a fucking idiot? Because everybody, you don't know what terms and conditions mean when, you, when you're filming somebody like Joe Jackson. The terms were, if Louis wanted to get even close, he had to pay $5,000 to Joe and $500 to Majestic. Pay your license fee. Will, the director, isn't confident the interview will be a success, exclaiming, I hardballed him. We are so fucked. While Louis remains optimistic, the interview starts. In what way are you speaking? And it falls flat on its face. Same with a potential meeting with Debbie Rowe, Michael's ex fiance Oh, and also make sure to subscribe for no reason apart from making me happy. In January, Louis and Will arrive in Berlin and see Michael hours after the infamous baby dangling incident. <laughs> Just look at this. I'm not going to edit it. It's just... Amazing. Terry George, a friend of Michael's as a teen, recounts his story of interviewing Michael on a cassette tape when the Jackson 5 stayed in Leeds. Terry says that a newspaper report about... 
That was mostly true, but spun heavily in favour of an exaggerated story, at least according to him. Terry actually pulled out of the documentary before eventually agreeing, and from the looks of things, he seems to be living a good life now, so good for him. And while writing this script, it was actually his birthday, so happy birthday to Terry. Interview number two. Coincidentally, it's also two o'clock in the morning. Louis addresses how Michael went on record and stated his fear of Joe, and the fact he beat and whipped him with switches and belts. Other topics included his plastic surgery, his friendship with children, and also this. Would you like to see Michael settle down with a partner? A loved one? A, a boyfriend or a girlfriend? A what? What'd you say? A boyfriend or girlfriend? What are you trying to say, Michael? Gay now? Turn the camera off. Now. T turn the camera off. Turn Just the camera. Think. Turn the cam. Turn the camera off. I Why is that an insult? Because we don't believe in gays. I can't stand them. Me either. By the time the Bashir documentary broadcasts, Uri and Louis meet for the final time, and Uri expresses regret at giving Martin Bashir the interview, but that doesn't necessarily mean he should have gave Louis it. Nothing should have happened in the first place. It was just a dual case of innocent and vicious journalistic greed. Louis, Martin and Michael is a documentary that doesn't need to be made, but ironically, despite never getting near to Michael professionally, it reveals the world that surrounded him, both in close relations and the fandom, both insane in their own right. Should Louis have ever gotten an interview with Michael? Probably not. But knowing this was one of the last quote-unquote quirky documentaries from Louis, it cannot be denied that his fruitless efforts made for a fantastic show. Thank you for watching. You starting off bad with that little home camera there. It's a little bit of tiny, it looked like a toy camera, man. The camera looked like a little bit of something you go to, to Radio Shack or Walmart or something just to buy and walk around with. It's broadcast quality, though. My YouTube members are at the top of the screen, and I'd like to say a special thanks to Mr. Atrox and Max G. Um, Billie Jean is not my lover!